Well, today we're going to reflect uh, Numbers chapter 6, 22 to 27, but I first want to take a look at the context with you. We've been studying the Torah this last year, and the Torah is the first five books of the Bible written during a time of transition. Think about it. Genesis, Abraham and his descendants were transitioning from Ur to uh, Egypt. Exodus is all about a transition, Israel's transition out of Egypt. Leviticus, they're making preparations for their transition. Numbers is all about a transition from Mount Sinai and through the desert. Deuteronomy is about their transition that is about to take place into the promised land. We are heading into a time of transition. I and my family are heading into a big time time of transition, going from one country to another country, from one city to another city, from one church to another from one school to another, from one home to another. You, church, are heading into a transition from one senior pastor to another senior pastor. Transitions. The book of Numbers is a book written in a time of transition. And at the beginning of Numbers, Israel was camped around Mount Sinai, and Numbers is about that transition from Mount Sinai through the wilderness, a transition from one thing to something new. But here's the question. What did God do at the beginning of that transition? And any, I'm welcome to hear. Any, any guesses out there? What did God do at the beginning of a transition? He blessed them. Thank you, choir. He blessed them. And he blessed them through the priest who's called to serve God in the congregation. And as we all move into a time of transition, once again, it's God's heart to bless you. Number 6, 22 through 27 is known as Aaron's priestly blessing because it, the priest traditionally gives the blessing, but it is known also as the platform. Not a, it sounds better in Hebrew, by the way, but the platform, it's known as that, the, um, the prayer of blessing, it's known as the raising of hands. Why is it known as those things? Because the traditional procedure for giving the priestly blessing, the priest would, would go onto a raised platform, a stage, um, and it's known as the blessing because the priest would wear a prayer shawl because it's, a, it's essentially a prayer. Uh, it's also known as the raising of the hands because when the blessing was given, the priest would raise their hands and give the blessing. Now, when the priest raised his hands to bless the people, he shaped his hands in a particular way. He shaped his hands in the sign of the Hebrew letter Shin. Shin is the Hebrew letter that looks like a W. Why? Why would he shape his hands in the Hebrew letter Shin? Because it's the first letter of the last word in the traditional blessing. Shalom. Sha. The W sounds like a sha. Shalom. So let's practice. You want to practice? Any Star Trek fans out there? How did Spock say farewell? He lifted up his hand and he shaped his fingers in a particular way and he said, live long and prosper. So can you do that? I'm, ki- I'm not kidding. Can you shape that, hand, that exact? I've got paralysis in my fingers, so I can't do it. I have a modified sort of version of it, but this finger just won't work. So thank you for doing it on my behalf. Okay, come on, let's all do this. Live long and prosper. Now, I have a question for you. Where does that hand shape come from? Huh? It comes from the idea of the priestly blessing. In fact, they they put both hands together and would give the blessing in this shape. So this hand, it's a, you see the shin, the W. This is a larger W. It's a shin. It's the, word, it's the beginning. It's, to, it's a symbolic way of remembering the shalom of God. Well done, by the way. Give yourselves a hand on that one. But here's the, what is important to understand. The blessing is not from the priest. The blessing is from from God. I'm going to kick my 
delivered through the priest. Let's look at it. Number 6, 22. The Lord, this is God's idea. They weren't asking for this. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons saying, thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them. This is the Lord's blessing. This is God's idea. It is not the priestly blessing. It is the Lord's blessing upon his people. It's God who wants to bless his people. And God blesses his people at the beginning of their transition. Now, I want to reflect on the Lord's blessing with you today. And there are seven words of blessing given by God. And I want to take a look at each of these seven words of blessing briefly with you. We're also going to see that the Lord's name is mentioned three times. The word bless is mentioned three times. So it is a triple triune blessing. Get ready to be blessed. So blessing number one, the Lord bless you. The Hebrew word bless means to have God's favor, to prosper, to flourish, to uh, thrive. And in the context of the book of Numbers, when Israel heard this blessing, they would have been thinking about the Old Testament covenantal blessings from the law in Leviticus and Numbers. The covenantal blessings where God says things like this, all and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. Sound good? And then there's this list. Your city's going to be blessed. Your fields, your ground, your cattle, your basket. Um, and then he goes on. He says, blessed shall be you. Uh, be, uh, or sorry. The Lord will command the blessing on you in all that you undertake. Can you believe that? All of it. His prosperity will come on the land. The Lord will uh, bless all the works of your hands. This is the blessings that they would have been thinking about when they heard God's going to bless you. And Jesus, of course, affirms God's desire to bless when he says, you, you know, parents, you know how to give good gifts to your kids. How much more will your father who's in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? And then Jesus' brothers, James, also says every good gift, every perfect gift comes from the father of lights. What's amazing about the blessing of God is that the people didn't even ask for it. They weren't even asking. And God gives his blessing simply Because he wants to bless them. God's heart is to bless you. The second blessing is to keep you. The Hebrew word keep means to watch or guard or protect. Again, in the Old Testament covenantal blessings, listen to what God was protecting them from. In Deuteronomy 28, it says, The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. It sounds pretty good, huh? Listen, I love this line. They shall come out against you one little way and they will flee seven ways completely flee from you jesus affirms god's desire to protect when in the prayer that we sung uh he says lord lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil it's god's heart when i think of the blessing from god this blessing to guard and protect i think about the union church of manila guards I love the UCM guards, and I think they love me. I feel the heart of God to protect me through them. They watch over me. They walk across the street with me to protect me. They walk me to my car, even if it's down the street, even if I don't ask them to. I see God's heart to protect through the UCM guards, and I'm grateful We see it with every mother and father who protects and guards and watches over their children. That's the heart of God. He wants to protect you. It's a blessing of being watched over and cared for. The third blessing. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. What does the word face mean? It means presence. You know, every Sunday I did it. This is just every Sunday since I can ever remember being here. I prayed the same prayer in that pew multiple times, first thing in the morning, before I preach, multiple times, even before I say the sermon, which you heard. Heavenly Father, please fill us, anoint us, empower us with your presence, with your Holy Spirit. And I trust 
that God says yes every time to that prayer because it is his will to bless us with his presence. Now, God already dwells with us through his Holy Spirit. We can be assured that God is present with us. But God does not just want to bless us with his presence in a general sense. God wants to shine his presence. Lord, let your light, light of your face, shine on us. And isn't it true that there are degrees of presence? For example, I mean, um, I don't have my cell phone. I was going to bring my cell phone with me. Anyone have a cell phone? I mean, does anyone not have a cell phone with them? Okay, so, um, yeah, let, let's talk. Let's, let's, yeah. Yeah, let, yeah, just talk to me. Am I present with you? No. Kind of. I'm in the same room. But, I mean, that's, uh, I'm not present. It's true that there are degrees of presence. You can be in the same room and be present. You can be kind of present. That's not the blessing God has for you. God does not want to just be kind of present in the room. God wants to actually shine his presence, his face. It's different when you have a conversation with someone who's kind of like this versus looking, bringing their face before you. That's God's heart. You know, one of my favorite books is Practice the Presence of God. I wish you would all read it. Brother Lawrence believed God wanted to shine his face upon him. He believed God wanted to bless him with his presence. So Brother Lawrence lived every moment of every day practicing the awareness of God's desire to bless us, not with a peripheral general presence, but with his shining presence. And you don't need to be Brother Lawrence to experience this. It's a gift we can all have It's God's idea to bless us with his face-shining presence. Isn't that good? The fourth blessing is may God be gracious to you. The the Lord's blessing is a beautiful Hebrew poem. It's written in poetic chiastic structure. Chi means an X. And so the middle of the poem is the most important. Think about this poem. Bless at the beginning, bless at the end. Keep or protect at the beginning. Uh, peace at the, at the end, face at the beginning, smile, uh, you'll see at the end. And then what's the center of this poem? Grace, 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 God's grief, free gift. The heart of this prayer is grace. The center of this blessing is grace. The most important gift that God longs to give you is grace. The Hebrew word for grace means favor. It is a free gift. You cannot deserve it. You cannot work for it, or it wouldn't be grace. And Jesus is is the giver of God's grace. John says this, the law came through Moses, grace came through Jesus. And that's why Jesus is God's gracious gift. If the core of the gospel were to be contained in one sentence, it would be Romans 3, 23 to 25. Let me read it. For all sin and fall short of the glory of God, but we are justified. That means we're made in a right relationship with God. How? By our works? No. By God's grace as a gift you can't work for. How does it come? It comes through Jesus, through the redemption of Christ, whom he put forward as a propitiation by his blood, just means his work on the cross. And how do you receive it? Through faith. If you would like to receive God's gift of grace today, simply put your faith in Jesus, and God's gift is yours. I invite you today to receive God's gift of grace. That would be the greatest despedida gift I could ever receive. God's heart is to bless you with his grace. The fifth blessing is the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The word countenance means expression. So what does it mean to lift up your expression? You want to demonstrate to me? Thank you, Jerry. Smile. Can you all smile? Give me a smile. That's what lifting up the countenance means. It just simply means a smile. What's the opposite of lifting up the countenance? It's the turn it down, to push it down, which means to frown. Did you know I looked up on Wikipedia, and you, it actually, they teach you how to frown. 
There's actually lessons, a procedure on how to furrow your brown and frown. Honestly, I looked at that. I did not feel any better. I felt worse after that experience. Why? Because when you're looking at frowns, what does a frown mean? Disapproval. So what's the opposite? What does the smile of God mean for you? He approves. That's God's blessing, his approval, his smile. The sixth blessing is to give you peace. The Hebrew word means shalom. Shalom simply means that everything is the way it's supposed to be. No more guns pointing at each other. No more need for summit talks. All our relationships with other countries, with God, with the earth, with our neighbor, with ourself. It's just the way it's supposed to be. That's God's heart. Jesus is the great giver when he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. That's God's heart. Can you imagine your world with no trouble, no fear? That's what God wants to bless you with. The seventh and final blessing. The seventh blessing, by the way, is traditionally not included in the the, uh, Lord's blessing. It should be. Because it is the completion of the blessing. And here is the blessing. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel, and I will bless them. The na- a name is a symbol for identity. So to put my name upon something means what? It belongs to you. So if you ever write your name on a book or write your name on a, on a piece of clothing, it means that's mine. You know, Jesus... Uh, in his vision of the bride of Christ, when God's presence comes down out of heaven and dwells his people, they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. This is the language of the Lord's blessing. You belong to God. God longs for you to belong. And God blesses you by putting his name on you. So friends, those are the seven blessings of number six. Before Israel was led into a time of transition, God blessed his people and God blesses you. Now, why does God bless his people? He blesses his people so that his people will be a blessing. When God called Abraham, he says, I'll bless you, make your name great. Why? So that you'll be a blessing. God's people are people who bless. So how do we apply this message to our lives? How do we apply this blessing? One way to apply the Lord's blessing is to pray this prayer of blessing every day. And I want to encourage you for the next seven days, I want to encourage all of us to pray this prayer of blessing as a prayer, as a blessing. Soak it up. Just do it for seven days. Will you do that for me? Seven days. Yeah, I've been praying it over those who are in the hospital. I've been praying it over my kids. I've been praying it. I've already had practice. And honestly, it's awesome. Pray it over your friends. Bless you, keep you, face, grace, smile, peace, name. If you're a parent, pray it over your children. If your children, pray it over your parent. If you're a teacher, pray it over your students. If you're a student, pray it over your teacher. If you're an employer, pray it over your employees. If you're an employee, pray it over your employer. If you're a doctor, pray it over your patients. If you're a pastor, pray it over your congregation. This prayer, pray this prayer when you wake up. Pray it when you lie down. Pray this prayer when you go out and pray it when you come in. Pray this prayer of blessing every day for seven days. So let me conclude, friends. You know, when Jesus concluded his ministry on earth, what was the last thing that he did? Any guesses? What was the last... Thank you. I love this choir. Bless you. I should have had you sit behind me every time I preach because I, like, feel the glory. Okay. When When Jesus concluded his ministry, what was the last thing he did before he transitioned to heaven? He lifted up his hands and he blessed them and he never stopped the blessing. While, 
while, can you say that word with me? While, while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried into heaven. So my friends, as a follower of Christ, the last thing I want to do as your pastor is to bless you. I want to end my ministry with you by blessing you. My final word is a word of blessing and not just any blessing, but the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord watch over you and guard you, protect you. May the Lord shine his presence upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord smile upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. And may you always and forever know your identity. You are God's beloved sons and God's beloved daughters. His name is on you. And all God's people said,